Greetings from the moon and welcome to another Moonman Pictures tutorial. So a little while ago I made this Apex water filter spot and someone in the Blender community asked me how I made these infographics. Therefore here we go, there's your tutorial mate. To start things off let's delete the default scene now let's create a circle mesh. Let's crank up the vertices. Now we scale our circle mesh. I am doubling the size here. And now in edit mode we just select a few vertices and delete those. Next up we extrude what's left. Change the end frame of the timeline to 100. And now we would want to keyframe our circle rotation. Let's make our life easier though and use a keen set. So every time we set a keyframe in 3D view, that would instantly lock our location and rotation. Let's set the end rotation to 360 in the properties shelf. Currently our animation decelerates and accelerates. We want it to play as a constant loop though. Therefore open the graph editor in another window. Reviewing the graph you can already see that it's not a linear extrapolation. Thus let's select all points by hitting A and after pressing V select vector. And you can see instantly that we created a loop. With our object selected just make a duplicate. The duplicated object would of course rotate the exact same way as our original object. Thus let's open up the dope sheet editor. Position your cursor at the center of your timeline. Now scale your keyframes to inverse them. And you'll notice that something's wrong. We just need to hit that little mouse button down there. Which will enable us to only change the keyframes of our selected objects. Now we have two circle shapes with inverse rotations. For the sake of ease, go to another layer. With your cursor at the center, create another circle and fill the mesh. Scale it down a bit and position it appropriately in your scene. When you think it looks sexy enough, go to the layer where you got your points. Change the pivot point to your cursor and in edit mode rotate it by 90 degrees. If you have to inverse it you just have to hit minus and now create an empty in the center. Name this empty any way you want. Now select your dots, search for mirror modifier and set the empty as the mirror object. This will make the empty a great control for our dots. You can rotate the empty or just easily move the dots. And when you enable Y as an axis also we can achieve more complex animations. Let's jump to our third layer now. Create a plane and scale it up again until it fits into the scene as shown. That's about it. So now let's rotate it by 45 degrees. I'm aligning it with the points we created before. And jumping to edit mode, let's delete the inner face. Select the remaining vertices and extrude inside. Thus we have our first frame. You can adjust it any way you want. Let's set a keyframe at frame 40. Also set a keyframe at our start frame and scale the object to zero there. And again something's wrong apparently. That's because our keying set only looks for the location and the rotation but not the scale. So change it to lock rod scale. So go ahead and keyframe the scale at frame 0 and 40. Again, it's an accelerating animation. This time, let's try something new though. So hit T and select Bounce. Just fiddle around a bit with the effects. 
So in the end, I went with the so-called back effect. Let's add an empty at the center again. Duplicate your object. And now adjust the keyframes of the newly created object. For example, you could just move the start frame to frame 5. And when you play the animation now, get that delay or pop-up effect. Now you can continue and just duplicate more frames and adjust their starting keyframes. So this is what it looks like for us. Now I'm going to duplicate another frame and that frame 40 I rotate it by 45 degrees resulting in this cute little animation. We could adjust a few things though. So I'm fixing the rotation here so that it really only moves to the side by 45 degrees. There we go. Now I want it to stand still for a moment though. Thus I'm duplicating one of the keyframes. So it rests from frame 30 to 35 in the same location. Now select most of the keyframed frames and parent them to the empty. All our object frames share the same location and rotation and scale at frame 35. Thus I keyframe our empty there and I scale it down at frame 45 in the end. I would like these frames to vanish at some point. Therefore at frame 65 add a little bit of rotation. And after adding 180 degrees of rotation I'm scaling it down to zero, resulting in this animation. Yet again, I would like to see a little stop there. Thus, I'm duplicating the frames and I'm delaying the scale to zero animation. Now, I'm adjusting our single frame to surround the other objects at frame 65 and I'm scaling it to zero at frame 80 also. So here's our current animation and so I think we have to adjust a few frames there. Let's see. You may fiddle around any way you want here. But I would like the outer frame to somewhat push the other frames into the center. Okay now here's our frame animation. So now I would like a frame to reappear at frame 100. Thus I'm simply duplicating frame 65 and moving it to 100. Let's extend our timeline a bit. And now I'm scaling our frame object at frame 100 to resemble something of a text box. Again, adjust the size to fit the entire scene. And here you can add a text. You can go super poetic, of course. I'm just using a simple placeholder. And now adjust your text to fit into the box. It's better to center your text object first, though. So go to Font Properties and align the text to the center. Now let's find a good position in a timeline for the text to be keyframed. And again I'm keyframing the scale of the frame and the text object. Though I would like the circle shapes to rotate longer than 100 frames. There are a lot of ways to do this. I'm just doubling the rotation at frame 200 here. And here's our animation so far. We've got rotating outline adding an itsy bitsy of extra and an interesting frame animation resulting in a text box. Now let's see if we can add extra complexity. Let's add another text. Again expanding from the center. Now take your fingers apart and press Ctrl, Shift, Alt and C. 
This is the shortcut to set your origin for your text object or any object. Set the origin to geometry and to line the text object in the center. I'm making it appear from frame 40 to frame 50. And then I'm parenting it to one of the frames by pressing Ctrl P. If you parented it to the frame that's reappearing, it will look a bit odd. Let's just make it disappear again. Here I'm duplicating frame 50, moving it to frame 80. And I'm moving the duplication of frame 40 to be on 81. Here's what we get. Let's move the first two frames of our high text to make it appear a bit earlier. All right. Let's adjust the other text element and parent it to the text box. And of course we have to readjust the keyframes now. Also set it to zero scale from the start of the text box. And here's the latest version of the animation. Let's move on to our small dots now. Keyframe their current position in the timeline. Try to find a good starting point for them to appear. And now you can very easily create a cool animation by moving them around and keyframing them. Of course we can also transform the MT and keyframe it. And here is our final animated result. Let's just give it a black and white material for now. Therefore select one of the objects and give it a shadeless white material. Also make sure to crank up the RGB values. Now select all objects in the scene. Then finally select the object with the material. Hit Ctrl L and link the materials. Now I'm just adding in a new camera and setting it to autographic. Change your resolution output. As I'm using it as a texture, I just want to cover the animated elements and therefore I'm using a square resolution. All right, here's our first animation. Of course, there are a lot of things that can be improved or changed. For example, you can make the outer lines a bit smaller, thinner. But you can see how easy it is to make an interesting infographic animation this way. For my backgrounds I just made some simple fade effects in GIMP. And then I saved them to my hard drive. I put them in the download section on my website. And here's how to use them. Let's say our white frame was animated. So if you wanted the white frame to outline your background, then just parent your background to the animated white frame. That's it. So that's all the basics that you need to create these infographics. I'm also using two fantastic add-ons. One of them is the typewriter effect add-on and the other add-on is unfold transition. You can find the links to download in the description of this video. If you like this video and maybe you just wanted to support me as an animator, you could have a look at my download section on my website. I'm currently giving 50% off and I'm extending the deadline until 18th January 2017.